So today we turn our sights towards freedom from our past, returning to our, our freedom series. And we're going to look at freedom from our past, going from bondage into deliverance, moving in essence from an old self into a new. The scriptures are filled with so many beautiful pictures of what happens in this exchange. And, and I'm an artist, so I love pictures and I love words that make pictures and I love setting a scene and I love I love uh, books that are written that way like Pastor Beth is very masterful as 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 an organizer and, and an analyzer and and all that and how she can put thoughts into categories and lists and things like that well I'm not that guy no I throw stuff at a canvas and then try to see what sticks and then what, what I can make out of it. So I, I love when your mind engages words and things start to, to kind of take form in your mind. And, and man, I, I just love, I love painting pictures and scriptures filled with so many beautiful pictures of what happens in that transaction of receiving Christ, taking Jesus into our heart and our life as Lord and Savior says we're a new creation, new creation. The old has become new, right? The old has become new. Put off the old, take up the new. These words just have this feeling of life, right? A lot of energy, and it's exciting. Like, we celebrate baptisms because that's the outward-facing uh, event that shows what's happening inside. We want to get dunked in that water and, and, and pulled back out, and it's, it's, everybody claps. A new life has entered. An old has been left behind, and a new has come up, right? It's exciting. It has life. It gives off this energy. So how do we become free from the things of our past? Well, we kind of go back to the beginning, right? We go back to the beginning because at our birth, where we all start, you have a birthday, I have a birthday, some of you are a little further along than I am, and I'm a little further along than some of you, but we're born into flesh, right? We are born into flesh, and that means that we're born into a world, and from that point forward, we are living our life under the influence of the world. We're living our life, good, bad, and everything in between. We're living under the influence of all the things around us. And we're a mixed bag of everything that we're a part of. And thankfully, there's a new beginning. A new birth. A birth that marks us going forward from that point under the influence of Jesus. If you want to be under the influence of anything... And I, I know some of this from experience. Be under the influence of Jesus. It's much more powerful. Yeah. It's much more life-giving. But, but we move from, from being influenced by the world to being influenced by Jesus. Yeah. And that's good. And one of my favorite passages of Scripture is an interaction in John chapter 3 that involves Jesus and Nicodemus, where Jesus is attempting to teach Nicodemus this concept. And it's beautifully done. It's beautifully done in, in The Chosen, and we're going to, that's always how, I, I mean, it's amazing because every time I read that passage, that's how I envisioned it kind of playing out, and, and it's really cool how well they did this, but you must be born again, born again, a fresh start on a new road. That exchange of life, interestingly, in a room filled with this many of you, it can be and look and feel very different. Some of you may have come to that point early in life, being part of a family that went to church consistently, and so you might have been young and really absorbing these things from a young age and, and, and making that decision at a young time and saying, yes. And then some of us, you know, some of us were on the, on the end of a rope trying to figure out how we were going to, how we were going to make, the, make life work. Jesus still comes in and does an amazing work. But for some of us, 
For some of us that, that got there early, we maybe didn't have as much baggage as maybe some of us who were hanging on a rope. You know, some of us are still pulling some things behind us that we, we haven't let go. But we come from different scopes at this thing called faith, the cross, and Jesus. So some have had pretty, pretty good normal lives and some have not. And there's a range of in the middle in a room this size. So I think it, it is fair to say that some of us maybe have more baggage than others. And there are some that at the time of trading old for new, there was this miraculous spiritual intervention that just kind of took that past and just whew, pushed it all away. And you were able to walk free out of that cell like Paul talks about and move forward. Some of us, it's, it's been more of a process and we kind of drag some stuff behind us like it's a ball and chain but we take it with us, but we're moving forward. But somehow it's still attached and we just keep kind of dragging that thing with us. So we're all in a, in a different mix. Release from bondage is a process for some. It's not that miracle like for others, but it will be a miracle no less. Rebirth in all of us begins as a process, sometimes short, sometimes long, sometimes in stages. But a process nonetheless leading us to the greater freedom we seek and desire. Paul puts it like this in Philippians 2, verses 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purposes. Well, work out your salvation. What does that mean? What does that mean? Simply, it means this. To put into action your new birth. It's a command to believers to live out their salvation from inside out. In a way that reflects their inside faith. In Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean work towards salvation. It means work from it. Work from it. I am saved as soon as Jesus comes in. There's nothing else I need to do to get saved. I say yes, Jesus, and he says yes to me. Right? So it's been wrongly interpreted at times about, about saying it means doing works. But the idea of working out your salvation is different from working for your salvation. We've already received salvation from God. And working out your salvation is about letting all that come out. Come out into the world. Let people see what the Lord has done. Right? Let the life-changing spirit of God that is now in you be represented in an outward fashion that it may testify to the change and the reason for the change that is now evidenced in your life. We are now in a process to partner with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit to go deeper and further into the knowledge of, of God, into the knowledge of even Him who did this saving for us. Scriptures uses several beautiful pictures like the potter and the clay. He's reshaping, remolding, remaking. There's a refiner's fire where gold is, is being heated up and all the things, that the impurities are rising up and that master goldsmith is just lovingly scooping out all the imperfections and getting rid of them. And each time he does this the gold is becoming more pure through that fire and he's watching ever watching for those impurities to rise up it's a process for some it's easier for some it's much tougher but it's a process and he's with us 
Now, there's also an enemy we have to deal with. We have to kind of acknowledge that that does happen. There's an enemy who doesn't want us walking out of that cell into a glorious freedom. He wants to keep that ball and chain kind of dragging behind you as, as heavily as he can make it. But we have to take hold of this freedom that we've been given. Take hold of it, grip it tightly, walk in it, and seek the healing in the, in the timing that God provides. Paul says in Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what is ahead. Straining forward to what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Moving forward gives us the strength to overcome the call of our past. Salvation has done its work. There is no, no partial salvation. It is whole and it is complete so if we focus on our past, there's a difference between having it back there and, and processing and doing those things. Focusing on it hinders our ability to move forward. It keeps us strained this way, and, and when we keep doing that, we don't walk a very good line forward, right? It causes us to stumble and fall and run into things. I do that while still looking forward anyway, but... I don't need extra issues to, to, to hinder me. God authors the healing we need from those things in the right time when we're ready. As we walk further away from who we were into who we are now in Christ, Paul understands that much of the battle we will fight happens up here. It happens in our minds. And he teaches us in Philippians 4, 4 through 9, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. Guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. There's a lot of promises there. But a lot of the what's pure and lovely and admirable and, and, and in that sentence, man, a lot of that is wrapped up in Jesus. There is a lot of beautiful things that God has created that we can focus on as well. But as much as we do that, we should be putting as much time as to, as to looking at Jesus. We are seeing in these verses the importance of our hearts and our minds being in a place of unity and peace. The synchronization of both our heart and mind is how we are being formed into the very image of Christ. This is how we walk as his hands and feet in our world. In Ephesians 4, 17 through 19, uh, Paul details out what our former life has looked like. He says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are all full of greed. So as Jesus followers, let's not fall back into these patterns of our former life. We were saved from this into better. Paul contrasts this again in Verses 20 through 24, he says, That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, 
which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on your new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So what that looks like isn't taking off something, folding it neatly around your arm. You've taken it off, but you kind of carry it with you. That's not what, no. It's saying you take that thing off and you drop it right there and you walk away from it never to check it out again we're supposed to keep looking this way we have dropped it we've let it go and we've put on jesus that's the new we have put on jesus and we're walking this way learning and and receiving from him everything we need going forward By looking back, we give ourselves room and space to the door that was our past. So if we stay too connected to this, we can easily bring those things back forward. We don't want, we don't want that. We don't want that. I've, I've had that happen in my own life because I was every one of these things that Paul says don't be. I lied. I cheated. I talked like, I mean, I grew up in the military, so I, my dad was in the Air Force, but I talked like a sailor. You know, it, it, everything, I was a con man. I made money off forgery. I could, I could copy most anyone's signature. So I, I made money giving people whatever they needed with a different signature on it. It's not a good dude. But Christ. But Christ. But the problem is if we hold, if we keep those things too close, they can come back on us at a moment of weakness or something can trigger us and we're back there. And I'm telling you, when I let the door open again, I almost lost my wife, my children, my family. And I'm telling you, when I let myself get back into the grips of the addictions that I was in, it almost ruined me. And I was a believer at that point in time. I was weak, but I was still in Jesus. But Jesus says, focus on me. Keep your eyes on me. See, in those trials and temptations, when they would come up and, and, and those things that came upon me, they took my eyes from what I was used to doing, looking to the mountain from where my help came from, and I started looking back to the things that made me feel better. No matter how wrong they were, it was too easy a switch because I left them too close. You can't leave that stuff too close. You got to walk away from it. You have to decide in your heart that that's so much better no matter the storm that rages against you. Jesus has not left you nor forsaken you in the midst of any kind of battle. He has never, never thought about leaving you or forsaking you. But when we turn, we leave him. Is that the plan? That's a bad plan. I'm not even in my notes. I don't know where I am and you guys are stuck with me for another I don't know how long. But you know, Paul says it's a race. It's a race. So sometimes when we, when we throw that stuff off, we've got, we've got weight unhindered. And so we, man, we're booking. We're booking. We're, we're running. We're running hard. Then circumstances happen. We slow down a bit. It's like, whoo, didn't know it was going to be this hard. Whoo, what's that back there? Oh, I didn't know I had a hamstring. Oh, it's pulling hard. But we gotta, we got to keep persevering in those times through ups and downs, navigating that terrain ahead with Jesus so he can help manage our stamina. Because what he's doing is he's helping us close out this race, reach our goal, and cross that finish line well. Because he's, he's there. He's with, with us. 
He's ahead of us knocking down stuff. He's beside us pushing people out the way. He's behind us blocking for us. But he's also up in front going, come on, you're almost here. You got this. You can do this. Not in my notes either. I don't know where I am. But you know, the, the enemy wants to keep us so linked to that stuff because what he wants to do is he wants to pinpoint your weakness and expose it. He wants to expose it and explode it in the presence of the world. Because if he can ex expose you as a fraud, then guess who else is exposed as a fraud? God and the Jesus in you. Yeah, if he can expose you as that fraud, what he's doing to the world is saying, well, that God thing don't work. That Jesus thing didn't do very good, did it? He's not real because look, oh, there they are lying in a pile. He wants Jesus and God to appear weak, incapable of being who he says he is, being unable to do the things he says he will do. The enemy would like nothing more than to keep us bound up in that space static and in, and in moving and God says I want you moving forward I want you moving forward so when our past comes knocking at the door of our present don't answer that damn door don't answer the door don't look that way Don't go into the haunted house. There's ghosts in there. You know, it's like in the movies. It's like, why are you going? There's that commercial where they, let's go hide behind the wall of chainsaws, you know, where the guys are running from the killer. And like, where is that a good idea? No, no, don't. So this is the same thing. There's, there's things that'll kill you back here. Don't run in that direction. Go this way. There's life. There's love, there's change, there's a spirit of God moving constantly for your good. If we allow, no, I better say this, I'm not going to skip that. It says, the reality lies in this, that the powers that seek to keep us in bondage have already been defeated on the cross. We are free. <laughs> Whom the Son has set free is what? free indeed we are free indeed man this is good let's call the the worship team back up i know i'm running an extra minute but it's okay vicky i love you so much because what, what you said lined up you know it did it lined up and it's good the holy spirit had a plan here and it's all good if we if we are allowing god to continue his work in us and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us, we move forward in our salvation. And in doing so, we move the kingdom of God forward through our witness and work, pushing back the darkness of our world and shining the light of Christ. Trisha, Trisha messaged me the other day, and she said, man, I found, this, I found this quote. It's really good. And I read it, and I said, yeah, that is really good. So I'm going to read it for you. We'll have it up here. It's not that God has been absent from us, but that we have been absent from God. Therefore, from the light that is in and from the center of all life, God's light is the very root of life. And too often in our Western traditions, We've been given the impression that his sin, this is important, we've, given, we've been given the impression that sin has the power to undo what God has woven into the very fabric of our being. Redemption in such models of spirituality is about light coming from afar to shine into what is essentially dark. But, love this, but what if redemption is a light being liberated from the heart of creation and from the essence of who we are. It has not been overcome by darkness. Rather, that light has been held in terrible bondages within us, just waiting to be set free. Yeah. It's from John Philip Newell. That's powerful. 
Because we were created by who? We were created by Jesus. We were created by God. He knew us in the womb when we were being formed. He knew us from the very beginning of ourself. Before we knew us, he knew us. Right? Before we had a cognitive take on who we were going to be, he knew us. He knew us. <laughs> Amen. Once he put it down, don't pick it up again. Remember, we've put something better. We've put something better on. And if, if you're here this morning and you've struggled with that type of thing, if your faith has been an up and down roller coaster where you felt the pull to turn back, you know, get prayer. It starts there. It starts with being vulnerable, letting people know that I need help. I can't do this by myself because left to my own devices, I'll keep going back to that door, right? But when I find that Jesus has done so much more for me and he continues to do so much for, more for me, he brought my wife and kids back to a place where it's a house of love. They trust me again. And I've been walking for, with him for a long time now since those things. I don't look back anymore. Why would, I, why, do, why would I want to look back on rocks that are ready to sink your ship? When I can look forward and have a new adventure every day. And that's what he wants for all of us. That new adventure. Gain something better. Learn something new. Walk something so much more full. I mean, when I released my life into his hands, he's done some cool stuff with me. He's allowed me to partner in some stuff that I never imagined I would get to do. Trisha and I have gotten to do missions in Nicaragua. She's gone to China and to Israel on missions trips. We've done some amazing things because we said yes to walking further with God and saying no to going back here. I'm no longer a lie and a cheat. I am no longer addicted to garbage. I'm addicted to the one who gave his life for me, restored my life and my family. I'm addicted to that because huh. there is joy in freedom. There is joy in freedom. Let's worship.